difficult. But it is one of the most fertile soil. If you were to dredge this soil which has been accumulated over the centuries, you could use it to make the land even more fertile than what it is. What do we do? Uh, our, our typical situation, the reason I'm saying, putting it forward here, we need to change our way of thinking. We think that flood management is increasing the embankments on the site, increasing the height of the villages on the site, and then we go on. But what happens? Embankment breaks, gets breached at a particular point, and you end up with floods. Instead of going up all the time, why don't we go down, take the river down, and let's have the, this thing. Another advantage that would happen is as the water goes up, it spreads over a larger area. The evaporation loss, which is almost estimated to be about 15% every year, would reduce because the amount of surface area that would be available would be that much less. I'll just now... Uh, I have taken it because I believe that dredging has a lot to do with all this. Because if you have water in the rivers, which can be almost two to three times the present capacity of the river, it not only helps in irrigation and flood control and drought control, but it also has an, another beneficial effect. Because of the pressure of the water, with a large amount of water there, the groundwater which is receding today gets recharged. This is something that we need to work, think about. As I said, that we just can't keep on talking about it. We must do something. We must do something and we must do something quickly. This is what our United Nations Secretary General has told us. Water scarcity is one of the highest priorities. And unless we do something, uh, we will be what the ancient marinas, there was a poem by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, that we will have a lot of water and we not a drop to drink unless we move forward and look forward to this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Kumar. That was certainly very informative and with very shocking statistics. It was certainly an eye-opener for somebody like myself. Our next speaker for the day is Mr. Paul Quinn. Mr. Quinn is currently serving as the Vice President Sales at Elliot, Dredge, at Elliot eh, sorry, Ellicott Dredgers since 2002. He is responsible for all global sales activities for Ellicott, which is one of the world's foremost dredge, dredge designers and producers. His experience with the dredging industry dates back to 1978 when he worked with a company that produced dredge pumps. Mr. Quinn has served as Chairman President of the Western Hemisphere Dredging Association and Board Member of the World Dredging Association. He, is, he has recently been appointed by the US Secretary of Commerce to serve on the District Export Council of Maryland and Washington, DC. It is an honor to have you here, sir. And Love to hear what you have to say. Today is getting ready for new dredging opportunities and challenges. And that's exactly what you're going to be hearing about all day. I've looked through the program in the last few days, and there are really some, some geez, there's some great papers in here that are exactly about the theme that you see up there today. And some of the things that you will be hearing about include discussion from existing programs from the viewpoint of the program owner or stakeholder, uh, the shipyard point of view on dredges, uh, the dredge designer point of view, and uh, discussion of contracts and contracting issues. So it's really, it's a really good broad mix of papers uh, that you're going to be seeing and hearing. Uh, and as, as I used to say when I was a teenager, uh, there's some really good stuff here in this, in this program. So pay attention and stick around. It's going to be worthwhile. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I like that the theme of this emphasizes 
new dredging opportunities and challenges. It isn't just rehashing the same programs. Uh, you know, and how timely is this? You know, in the last year, we've heard so much about new developments for dredging programs. It's, it's really inspiring. You could see the, the political will to carry out these programs in India is forming and getting larger every day. And that's what's really important for a lot of these, especially inland dredging programs. You know, every country has them, every country has inland waterway authorities. But they really require political will from the top level to make them go forward. And that's what I perceive happening in India now. Uh, you know, no doubt India already has one of the largest programs for major navigation projects to support your ports in the world already. But we're seeing more and more emphasis on inland and shallow draft projects uh, for navigation, for flood control, uh, for irrigation. Uh, and in fact, just two weeks ago, on 26 May, your Minister of Roads, Nitin Gokhari, uh, said that developing inland waterways are his priority. Uh, and wow, that guy's my hero. If, if he were here, I'd hug him. Well, I looked at a picture, and I don't know if I'd hug him, but I'd sort of try to hug him. Uh, he's a pretty large guy. Uh, but, but, you know, he got it. You know, and even if what's inspiring is he's not Minister of Waterways, Minister of Shipping. He's really Minister of Road Transport. Here's a guy that's in charge of roads, and I know he covers shipping too, but the idea is you just can't facilitate transportation by pouring more concrete. That can't be the only solution. Build new rail lines, build new highways. You know, sometimes the key is getting transport off the highways and onto barges, onto waterways. So, you know, obviously he got it, which is, you know, transportation, when it comes to transportation, you have to utilize all your tools. And waterways in a lot of countries are traditionally neglected as part of the whole transportation scheme. So it's good to see him looking at that. And again, this conference covers all dredging opportunities. This isn't just about New Inland Waterways, it isn't just about flood protection, but we should keep in mind there's other things uh, that dredging, that can be done with dredging. An important one is desilting of reservoirs, uh, especially ones, reservoir, reservoirs created with uh, dams because dams are there to catch whatever comes down a river. Of course, they do a good job of catching and withholding water, but they withhold silt, too. And after decades and decades, the silt level gets higher, and which means capacity of the reservoir gets reduced. This is an important thing to keep in mind. It should be on everyone's consciousness to pay attention to dams. Water, as we just heard, is critical. It's more important than oil. And, you know, interesting, he, you mentioned perhaps a third world war could be over oil. There's always water issues between countries, and who does this river belong to? You know, dealing with dams, maintaining depth in dams, critically important. Uh, I know you've got an initiative of Clean Ganges, you know, what a noble project that is. Uh, especially dealing with removing heavily polluted sediments in urban areas. That presents its own unique set of technologies, not just from dredging, but treating and dealing with the con contaminated sediments 
once are removed from the Ganges. And, and I'd like to be so bold to sort of propose that at one time there, that ought to be a special conference because it is a whole separate set of technology dealing with heavily contaminated sediments. Uh, no doubt, you know, you've got a, a strong economy, you've got growth of your ports and harbors. That's already a big, massive program, but that's going to continue to grow. Um, so anyway, this is an exciting conference. I'm really glad to be part of it, and uh, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. And thank you for your very astute remarks on our Shipping and Transport Minister, Mr. Nitin Gadkari. He was supposed to be with us this morning. We are very much looking forward to having him here. But unfortunately, he had a personal commitment which took precedence. <laughs> so you can't hug him. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have now our next speaker is Dr. Mohit Ray. Dr. Ray is an expert in environmental impact assessment environmental management, risk assessment, and pollution-related studies. He has done environmental studies for World Bank and international aided projects in India, South Korea, and Bangladesh. He is also a writer on environment and has published a number of books. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everybody, and thanks to Institution of Naval Architect uh, special thanks that you have reminded that environment is an important issue even in this business and it's uh, more uh, better that you have started with an environmental issue at the beginning of this conference because when I went to the website and saw the uh, papers, the topics that would be covered, uh, there was no environmental thing in it. So anyway, the problem is that even if you don't keep us, we will catch you. Whatever you want to do today, even the Mumbaikers know very well that you have a, want to have a coastal road and you have to wait, wait for several years to get permission. Well, that's bad and good because, you see, how you see dressing as you put some equipments into water and some diesel thing and of course there's part mining and other things and there are a lot of benefits no doubt we will not put so much money into water for this thing but from an environmental perspective we see it in a different way you enter into a water body and water body is a system is a living system it's just just like that if you want to enter my house and say i'll clean your room I say, okay, you clean my room, but don't destroy my furnitures. Or even the old violin I kept of my father, I kept somewhere. You just destroyed it to thought that, oh, it's, you know, 80 years old, so it can be taken as a waste. So, whenever you are going to dredge, you are dealing with water body. It can be a river, lake, or a sea, or, and this specifically, which you will be discussing all that day, the rivers and also specifically Indian rivers and I'll say that is a very specific zone for environmental issue. I'll come to that later. So dredging intervenes an ecological system. And what is an ecosystem? Most of you know nowadays because at least our kids now know because this in their school uh, you know, textbook that is the interaction between the biotic and abiotic components of a system. That means just think of I'll say the just think of the aquarium in your house dome. That's the ecosystem, you see, and you care for it. You put food into this, proper food, you put some uh, air, bubble the air. So that's the ecosystem. In a bigger way, you are going to deal with when you are dredging. And that is a ecosystem. First comes the most important part of the ecosystem is food chain. Who eats whom? And if you see this part of this, a simple food chain, you find that different kind of from the smallest planktons, that means the algae, the green things, 
the green water you see which are the, the even in the sea or river those are the green things which are the basic food from which the whole food chain starts and if you go into want to go into details then it's a huge complicated web and you are remain remember you are putting all your equipment into that web now more important is that when you go you take your all your equipment you go at the bottom so that's why i named my presentation that keep environment at the top when you dredge at the bottom now that bottom is a layer of sand earth gravel everything but it's not a dead area it's a very much a living area and it has its own ecosystem you can see the bottom of this water body and this whole area from this side to the bottom there are different kind of aquatic organisms are involved with these things you can get idea from this uh, figure that there are different kind of aquatic organism it can be animals it can be planktons and different kind of things so your equipment is going through this so you have to think about it that what is to do and more importantly this is this we call benthic zone benthic zone has its own ecology and one more important thing is that that whatever you put into the water goes down and lot of thing goes down remains in the sediments and that becomes food for the whole system and that food is carried at different chain at different level of water so when you churn the bottom you are in fact churning the um, uh, food store of the whole aquatic system so you, so dredging has to be careful it's not that you don't do you don't do dredging you have to be careful and if you don't because as you have equipment you can do miracles just a recent controversy came about the south china sea island china is you know building actually a island to prove their you know um, uh, occupation in our presence in that area but the thing is that whenever they are dredging and bringing more sands and and earth from the seabed they are destroying the coral reef there or if you see this is the canadian harbor is a very recent report that well they are making a port but they are actually when they are doing it they are destroying the great barrier reef so but we'll go in with some very specific impacts and finish it very quickly if you see the dredger is there so when it is dredging it has different kind of plumes coming out and it is um, uh, disturbing the whole aquatic system what is the first does when you dredge you remove the benthic animals now we have to see when you are dredging how much important are these benthic animals what they do function will they again come back when you stop dredging this is the first part of the most important thing of dredging removal of the benthic animals because they are the basics of a food chain in a water body and then you put you take some uh, silt out of it but in the way you also put some silt into the uh, sediment into the river water and that makes a big area of suspended sediments and that turbidity and suspension affects the aquatic system very much just think of light the aquatic system depends on how much sunlight penetrates in the different zone of the water body so when there is a suddenly there is a suspend suspensions of sediments everywhere the whole system breaks down so the aquatic organisms they do, they don't get their food and lot of organisms which take water into their system those those system gets you know choked by the sediments and you can see this kind of sediments the is the dredging from the dredging thing which are floating on the sea now again i'm saying that i'm seeing the uh, this photographs of the sea but you will work in the river the river system in india is more delicate in the ocean you can you know get away with some of these things but in the river system this is very difficult 
and also when you churn out these things, as I said, this is the food store. The food store is being churned out of the whole water. So some of the foods are coming up the top, which is not needed there. And some things are taking there. So that disturbs the whole system. You can suddenly find lot of a lot of uh, aquatic plants are coming up because they are getting food, which we will call algal bloom or the, as you see in the ponds and other things, lot of aquatic weeds come up because they get lot of nutrient from the outside.